for me, Lord. If you don't do it for me, it won't get done. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, as we come before you this day again. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We lift you up today, Lord. You are our God, Lord, and we love you today. Oh, Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and your praise shall continue to be in my mouth, Lord God. So as we come before you today again, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us, Father, where we have come short of your glory, Lord God. Thank you for saving us, Lord God. Thank you for delivering us, Lord God. Thank you for your healing, Lord God. Thank you for all that you do in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for our health as well as it is. Thank you for our finances, Lord. Thank you for a roof over our head, food and clothing, Lord God. We pray for those that are less fortunate. We pray for the sick and the shut in. Those that are hospitalized and in the nursing homes, we lift them up before you. And also, I lift up my wife before you, Lord. Let your blessings and healing continue to be with her, Lord God. Now, Father God. Bless us today as we dwell into your word today, Lord. Open up our understanding, Lord. Give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we may glorify you, Lord God. Help us to let our light so shine that men may see our good works and that you may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. I believe y'all could actually do a little bit better than that. Come on and get up there. we go. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Why are you standing? Why are you standing? Amen. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30. And then we're going to go to verses 36 through 43. Coming from the King James Version, I honor my Lord and Savior today, Jesus Christ. I honor our church mother, yes. our missionaries. I honor my first lady in her absence, and I honor each of you in your respectful places. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. From the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30, and it reads, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed terrors among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the terrors also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the terrors? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the terrors, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the terrors, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verses 36 through 43 of the same chapter reads, Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the terrors are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the terrors are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels. And they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And shall cast them in a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. If I would give you a thought this morning. 
it will simply be living among weeds living among weeds as i get into the message this morning i want you to picture in your mind a man as he prepares to plant his seeds yes. you see this man observes the ground looking for the most fertile place for his seed to grow he takes his plow and breaks up the ground until it is ready to receive the seeds that he has to plant the ground is then fertilized and watered and tended to as he waits for his seed to sprout some of you have had your own gardening experience i know without just calling out people names but i know brother robert i've been out around him and i know he does a lot of gardening himself i've seen some of them fine collard greens and stuff that he have at the market sometime a man as a matter of fact he shared with me uh last spring i got some okra from him a man and praise god it was good too you know what i'm saying but uh, for him to get those greens the way they are and that okra the way that it is he got to take care of the ground he got to get the ground ready and they plant the seed he got to put the proper amount of water on it amen and it's got to get the proper amount of sun amen and you see when the farmer is getting it ready he prepares it and he waits for the seeds to sprout and not long after with sunshine and rain his crops begin to grow and I believe Robert can probably say amen to this, but right along with his crops comes the weeds. Now he didn't plant the weeds, but there they are. The Bible says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now watch this. The Webster's Dictionary says a sleep. Say while men slept. The dictionary defines sleep as a condition of body and mind that typically recurs for several hours every night in which their eyes are closed, the postural muscles relaxed, and here it is, the activity of the brain altered and consciousness of the surroundings practically suspended. And this is how it is here in our parable this morning. The sower has planted the seeds, but when the wheat came forth, along with it came the tares, the weeds. And let me just say this morning just how much of an enemy the devil is. If you go with me to 2 Corinthians 11th chapter, verses 13 through 15, the Bible says he appears as an angel of light. He says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yes. And therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Listen to it from the New Living Translation Bible. The New Living Translation Bible puts it like this. These people are false apostles. They're deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. You've got to be careful, church. You've got to be careful. Uh, verse 14 says, But I am not surprised even Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light. Ain't that something? He don't come to you with the red suit. The pointed tail and the, and the pitchfork and the pointed ears. Yes, yes. But he disguises himself. Yes. Oh, that may help somebody say, even as ministers of light, like he's the real thing. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of light. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful who you listen to. Let me go a little bit further. Look at your neighbor and say, be careful flopping from church to church. Because Satan will disguise himself as ministers of light. Now pick that up. Ministers of light. Amen. Look and sound like the real thing. Can I go a little further? He said, in the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Are you with me today? Go to 1 John 4 and 1 from the New Living Translation. Look at what it says. 1 John 4 and 1. It says, dear friends, 
Do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. Did you hear that? Amen. For there are many what? False prophets in the world. Satan is known to us as the great deceiver. And it is Satan's desire this morning to deceive those who have never been saved. Not only this morning, but every day. You see, the enemy comes under the cover of darkness. As a matter of fact, one of the scriptures in the Bible teaches us that Jesus brought us out of darkness into what? The marvelous light. See, when everyone is sleeping, the enemy comes under the cover of darkness to sow the seeds amongst the, the believers, to sow seeds amongst the wheat. Yes. He often works in the shadows, subtly, subtly introducing sin and discord when we least expect it. Now that word, subtly introducing sin and discord when we least expect it. This reminds me of Genesis 3 and 1. In Genesis 3 and 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more, what? Subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So that word subtle means deceitful. It means elusive. It means cunning, crafty, tricky, devious, false, and watch this, misleading. Misleading. And that's why you got to be careful who you follow. I wish I had some help today. Yeah, yeah. You got to be careful who you follow. You can't follow everybody. Yes, Lord. Amen. You can't follow everybody. Amen. See, the enemy knows how to take a little bit of good word and mix it with a little bit of false stuff and mix it all up until the point you say, well, he coming from the Bible. He coming from the Bible. But you can take the scriptures and make them say what you want to make them say. Yeah. And people are real smart for that. Amen. Sneaky. The devil been around a long time. Amen. He been around a long time. And the only thing that can run him off from you is knowing the word for yourself. The Bible talks about Jesus was led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And every time the devil tried to tempt him with something when he came at him Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God and then he will say it is written it is written it is written and that's one thing the devil can't handle is the true word. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And in order to get that true word to be able to offend the devil, you got to get it on the inside. Come on, somebody. You see, the devil doesn't announce his presence with a loud proclamation, but rather he speaks in unnoticed, planting seeds of doubt fear and we know that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love power and a sound man and temptation among the good seeds of faith hope and love that God has sown into our hearts now watch this Satan is always on the prowl looking for opportunities to sow seeds of discord and deception into our lives amen watch this that's why the apostle peter warned us in first peter 5 8 through 9 from the king james version it reads listen be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil now that word adversary is a key word that means your opponent it's almost like in a boxing match when you got another guy on the other side he's your opponent and he's doing all he can to knock you out am i right about it amen so he said because your adversary the devil he's our opponent right as a roaring lamb walking about seeking whom he may devour look at that there seeking whom he may devour He's looking for the one that he can get. Amen. Watch this. Verse 9. He said, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now look at it from the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says it like this. Him, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Stay alert. Look at your neighbor. Say, stay alert. Yeah. Ain't no time for going to sleep. Don't be nodding off in the church. Yeah. Amen. Stay alert. Get that word on the inside of you. Yeah. Don't you know sometimes when you began to start praying at night how you get sleeping, your mind wander off and drift off? Yeah. I think that's an attack of the devil, amen? But I also think it's an attack on us that we're a part of it. Because why wait till you get sleepy to get up and start trying to pray? Come on, somebody. Look at this. He says, stay alert. 
Watch out for your who? Great enemy, the devil. A lot of people don't like to preach about the devil. But Jesus talked about him. The apostles talked about him. You better get to know him for yourself. Amen? Yeah. Watch this here. Watch this here. This is the way I heard it, that in the bank, when it comes to counterfeit money, they say the bank tellers, they don't teach them about the counterfeit money by using counterfeit money. You got to catch this in the spirit. They teach them by looking at the real money. And when they get accustomed to the real money, they quickly able to identify, come on somebody, some counterfeit money. See, when you get news to the real Jesus, the real word, know the word for yourself, get used to God for yourself. On the inside, you'll be easy, come on somebody, to detect when the counterfeit comes. Because the counterfeit is coming, right? So he says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Yes. He says, stand firm against him yes. Yes. and be strong in your faith. Yes. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Yes. We must be vigilant. We must be aware of his tactics. He doesn't care who you are, where you come from, or even what you've done. If he sees an opportunity to sow seeds of discord, he'll take that opportunity. Yes, he will. The enemy doesn't discriminate between the good and the bad. He simply sows his seeds wherever he can. Yes. That's the key, wherever he can. Amen. Some folks say they save, sanctify, and fill with the Holy Ghost, and Satan sows seeds in their heart. Yes. The word for the terror here in verse 25 is the Greek word, Zazanian. It speaks of a weed called a Darnell. It is a weed that looks like the real thing. It has some of the characteristics of the real thing, but it is not the real thing. Yes. This Darnell, this tail, like the wheat, has been planted by a sower in our text, and it grows in the same field as the wheat does. It receives the same water, the same sunshine. But it never produces any fruit. Therefore it's good for nothing. So who are the weeds? Who are the tares in this parable of Jesus? Well for starters. The tares being sown by Satan. Many times will be the cause of trouble in the church. Yes. Can I preach it like I feel it this morning? And the tares many times is the one going around spreading gossip. Causing trouble amongst the brethren and uh, the terror is the one that can go without reading the word of god for he or she does not need spiritual nourishment the terror is the one that can miss church and soul winning and, and it really doesn't even bother yeah. the terror does not have much of a prayer life except when seen of men that's why Jesus said, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, the terror is the one that has no hunger for the things of God. The terror speaks of the person who goes to church all the time among the weak, or among the saints. Yeah. And this, I believe, speaks of the person who does all the things a Christian is supposed to do, but they've never established a relationship for themselves with Jesus Christ. Can I say it like this? The terror is among the wheat, but not of the wheat. You see, Judas was among them, but not of them. Am I right about it? He went along through time looking like a disciple, but he was lost. Who am I talking to this morning? Yes. And let me just say this. You may look like a Christian. Yes. You may act like a Christian. Yes. You may even read your Bible every day. Yes. You may go to church every time the doors are open. Yes. But unless Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you, yes. Yes. you are not saved, you've been deceived by Satan, and you're a counterfeit Christian. Yes. So what does the Bible say about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Romans 8 verses 8 through 9 reads from the Amplified Bible it reads it like this and those who are in the flesh amen living a life that caters to sinful appetites and impulses 
cannot please God. However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled by the sinful nature, but the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God lives in you, directing you, and guiding you. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If, somebody say if. If. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, what? Y'all read it. Did you see that? Yes. But, somebody say but. But. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. And is not a child of God. So why do we go around telling everybody we all children of God? Yes. That's one of the biggest lies the devil ever told. Yes. Yes. Don't let him use you to say it. We ain't all children of God. We are all God's creation. Yes. Come on somebody. Yes. Don't you remember that Jesus told the Pharisees and the scribes at one time. He said you are of your father the devil. Am I right about it? Yes. Now, I feel like preaching because... They might be planted in a church pew next to you this morning. Next to the wheat. Might be somebody next to you this morning. And they may look like wheat. And they may have everyone convinced that they are wheat. Maybe they've even convinced themselves that they are wheat. But their appearance of godliness and their good reputation won't help them at the judgment. Yes. Y'all got mighty quiet on me. I believe that this is very sobering because there are good church people, watch this, folks don't like to say this, who are going to go to hell. Yes. Are you with me today? Yes. Well, what does the Bible say about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Look what it says. King James Version says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. How about that? Somebody say that Bible says it. Bible says it. I, believe it. I believe it. And that settles it. Y'all done got mighty quiet on me. Yes, yes. Somebody say the Bible says it. Bible says I, believe it. I believe it. And that settles it. That settles it. it don't matter what I think or what nobody else try to tell you. The Bible says it. And that settles it. Let's look at it again. Everybody ain't going to heaven that's in the church. Look what it says. And this is, by the way, this is Jesus talking. Supposedly. Read letter Bibles. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that what? Talk to me. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Doeth is an action word. James, the half brother of Jesus said, be ye doers of the word yes. and not hearers only deceiving your own selves look what he said in verse 22 he said many will say to me in that day what day is that? judgment day many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in thy name be careful everybody got a word for you <laughs> you hear me? have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils. Oh, I seen them. They were laying hands on people and, and people was being delivered and healed. They, 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 they anointed over there. Let me tell you something. God is the one that does the work. God can work through the devil too. But the devil going to have to answer to God. And we ain't got no business trying to follow the devil. You better know who you're following. Look at your neighbor and say, you better know who you're following. You better know where you're going. Listen, look at it again. Verse 22. He said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, preached, teached in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? And even in thy name we've done many wonderful works. Yes. But look at Jesus. He said, And then will I profess unto them, I what? Y'all going to talk to me today? I never knew you. You do what? Depart from me. Ye that do what? Wickedness. Come on, look at your neighbor and say it's tight, but it's right. You see, we live in a day and time when people have more religion 
than ever before. And yet with all this, they have never met the Lord Jesus Christ on a personal basis. And that's what causes most problems in many good churches today. Can I preach it like I feel it? Because there are tares that's been planted amongst the wheat. And who planted the tares? The devil. Oh, I wish I had some help today. Many folks in the church are not saved. Everybody in the church ain't saved. Watch well, this. Listen to me now. There are many carnal and immature Christians as well. But many are just plain lost. Not saved at all. Some of them ain't saved and ain't trying to get saved. Watch well, this. Some are just religious, but they haven't been converted. They haven't been born again. They were born into a particular sect growing up knowing creeds and rituals. Some of them can quote the Bible better than we can. Yes, yes. Accepting, some of them accepting signs of true conversion they never made. And it's truly personal in coming to Jesus for salvation. Let me say it like this. Uh, accepting these signs of true conversion and never coming to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Watch this. Ask them if they are a Christian and they'll respond with their sect name that they were baptized as an infant or a child and made it through some form of catechism or confirmation class other than their daddy or their granddaddy was a preacher yeah. or a deacon yeah. a mama sang in the choir yeah. grandmama was a praying woman yeah. all that's good but that don't save you I wish I had some help today. Somebody used to say, old church would say it like this, you can't get in riding on grandmama's coattail. Watch this here. Somebody may get mad with me, but I'm going to say it anyway. And just because daddy and granddaddy was a preacher don't mean they were saved. Just because mama sang in the choir don't mean, oh, y'all going to like me when I talk like this, but I'm telling the truth. Just because grandmama was a praying woman don't mean, come on somebody. Come on, somebody. You got to get this thing right for yourself. Yes, yes. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. And I ain't talking about physical life and death. I'm talking about eternal, spiritual life and death. Because the Bible says, appointed unto all men wants to die. And after that, the judgment. Some believe that they're saved just because they're a deacon. Or a Sunday school teacher. A missionary. A preacher, a choir director, a musician, all sorts of things, but not a clear affirmation that they came to Jesus as a sinner and repented of their sins and asked Jesus to save them because that he died and rose again for them. Watch this. Many are even pushed to say the sinner's prayer before they fully understand it. Y'all hear me? They'll push to say the sinner's prayer before they fully understand it, or they are really ready in their heart to do so, before they're really ready to do so. Yes. That's why I oftentimes say, if wives, if you bring your husband, or husbands, if you bring your wives, or mothers, if you bring your children, don't push them to the altar. Because a lot of times you push them to the altar, they'll get up and do it just to get you off their back. Yes. Do I have any help? Yes. And they ain't really made it up in their mind and their heart. But they're doing it because you say it and now you're happy with it. And you say, well, I seen them go to the altar. Well, the Bible said man looks at the outward appearance. But God sees the heart. And then you see some of them doing all kind of crazy stuff. And they say, well, God knows my heart. Well, you better know it. He know your heart. Amen. Your heart is deceitful and wicked. Amen. Don't, 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 don't trust your heart. Don't judge on your heart. Amen. You better judge on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch this here. Let me go a little further. The next soul runner will be told that the prayer has already been said. Thus sending them happily on their way. You know, when they come up, do one prayer. And then, well, uh, this one, he accept the prayer and he move on. And then the next one come up, well, we already done prayed. And he move on, being inoculated, thinking that they are saved. They never come to church after this. They never get baptized. I was baptized as a kid. Well, have you been baptized since you got saved? Come on, somebody. 
Say, see, see, I got baptized as a kid, but I wasn't saved. Y'all ought to help me today. But when I got saved, I wanted to be baptized. Oh, yes, sir. See, they never read the Bible and they never have any change in their life. But according to the prayer that they went through, they're saved. Watch this. And someone gets to report one more notch on their gospel gun that is shooting blanks. Y'all get that? Oh, we led 50 of them to Christ today. Well, mark it down. I led 50 to Christ today. Well, did you? Or are you just getting to add another notch on your gun that you did something and people still walking out the same way they came in? Yes. On the other hand, some will be curious and they will come to church and be baptized because they enjoy the music, uh, the newfound friendships. Uh, they like the pastor. So they become regular attenders. And at some point, they even may become a teacher, or a deacon, or a missionary. But they're still lost. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man, that don't mean man as me being up here as a man, but let me say it like this here, any human. Any human. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. A new what? Creation. creation. What? Old things passed are passed away. That's why you constantly see some folks that they come through and they make the profession of Christ and they still live in the same way. Yes. Something ain't took place. They haven't been changed. They haven't become a new creature. Because when you become a new creature, old things pass away and what? Behold, all things become new. Who am I preaching to this morning? Some of them, they come up and say they gave their life to Christ and they're a Christian and they tell you, let me pray for you. And they want to talk to you about the, about the Lord and they still drinking. They still smoking. They still cussing. They still fornicating. They still committing adultery. They still partying. They lie. They cheat. And steal and leave a wealth of problems in their way. But listen to what Second Timothy said, chapter three, and I may have didn't give that to you, but listen to Second Timothy chapter three, and you can get it. I got it in a, a different translation here, but you might can read it along, maybe. Listen what it says. I'm gonna go to verse two first. It said that people will be lovers of themselves, and y'all read it in between. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Watch this. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Watch this. Having a form of godliness. Give, give me Second Timothy 3 and 5 quick like out of order. I know I'm out of order here. Amen. But I want you to see that now. Second Timothy 3 and 5. If you can pull it up. Say it again. Either one. King James if you got it. Here you go. Look at it right there. See? This is the problem with the terrors. This is the problem with those that profess to be Christians and are not. What, what does it say? Having a what? A form of godliness. Just like the terrors, they look like the real thing. They know how to talk it. How many of y'all know something like this? You know, everybody in the church ought to raise your hand. They know how to talk about the Bible. They know how to talk about church. Yeah, yeah. But you know one of the one of the things that get me the most out of a lot of that that uh those tales and that Darnell Wheat or uh, those uh counterfeit Christians or those hypocrites, yeah, I'm calling all the names on them. Amen. Unbelievers, whatever you want to call it. Uh what gets me about them a lot of times is here they is trying to tell you and I about what the Bible says. Yeah. And they ain't even living it. But they want to tell you what, how you supposed to live. They want to tell you what the church supposed to be like. They want to tell you what you supposed to be like. You going to church. You gave your life to the Lord. 
supposedly. But now they want to tell, oh, it don't mean that. That's not really what it means. It means this and that. And then they deal doing the same thing, living the same way. Ain't been no change in their life. They, ain't, they go to church sporadically. Every now and then. Here, there, everywhere. Come on, somebody. Yes. Y'all with me today? But what did, what did he say? Listen to this. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They act like they can't, can't quit doing what they're doing. Yes. They act like the power of God can't deliver them. They can't save them. See what it says? But the nine, the power thereof, what it say you better do? Do what? I can't hear y'all this morning. How can two walk together except they agree? Thank you, man. Let's go. These folks, watch this. These folks may be really good workers. And in that sense, great assets to the local church until a controversy comes up. I'm almost finished. Then they'll be not able, then they won't be able to deal with it in a spiritual manner, right? Because they don't have the Holy Ghost to guide them. They be they will more likely take a stand against the truth. Unless their good friend is on that side. And then they will stand with their friend or their family member. Watch this here. You can stand with your friend and die and go to hell following your friend. You can stand with a family member and die and go to hell trying to follow a family member. Do y'all hear me today? I think Jesus one time said the blind lead the blind. If you blind, why are you going to follow somebody else's blind? Okay, if I, let me say it like this here. If you can see why are you going to follow somebody that's blind? Want me to break it down? If you say, why are you following somebody unsaved? Yes, yes. If you've been born again, why are you following somebody that ain't been born again? Are you with me today? Yes. We got to get this thing together, y'all. Yes. Watch this here. Watch this here. And then they'll stand with their friend or the family member even if they don't fully understand the issue. That's blood, blood, thicker than water. Blood, 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 thicker than water. Who am I talking to today? Blood, thicker than water. You better, you better, you better get up under the right blood. Yes. The blood of Christ. Yes. That, that, that's the blood that's thicker than water. Jesus' blood. That's the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of your sins. Are you with me today? Yes. Can I just talk? Y'all know me. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Watch this here. Somebody said that two wrongs. What? All right, we're on the same course today. Come on, somebody. Then in the end, because of that, because of somebody getting caught up, those terrors, unbelievers getting caught up, joining on different sides in the churches when it comes to issues in the church, amen, sometimes the church splits, and if enough people leave, keeping the doors open becomes a challenge. Watch this. Sometimes, watch this. I like this here. I wrote this down. Y'all, y'all, y'all make note of that. Sometimes the split is called a backdoor revival. Let me try to help some of them pastors and preachers out there listening. Sometimes your split church, or when people leave and split up, can be called a backdoor revival. What you talking about, preacher? What you talking about, pastor? Because when the troublemakers leave, then God will bless the church. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Watch this here. Watch this here. <laughs> Can I just talk? <laughs> I used to run behind people. I learned. Don't run behind everybody. Some people, you just got to let them go. Come on, somebody. I'm talking today. I'm saying some of the stuff that other preachers want to say they won't say. But they don't tell the truth. You better start running behind everybody. Other times, it's the religious but lost that stay with the church. Come on, that's the flip side of the coin. Sometimes it's the religious, but lost that stay. And eventually, the church becomes a social club. Waning away until the last member dies. Yes. Unless God brings in people, new people. Somebody say new people. Yes. Uh, unless God brings in new people who cause a revival. And the terrors themselves end up getting saved. See, terrors can get saved. Yes. 
Amen. And that's what we want, right? We want Terrence to get saved. We want that Darnell Wheat, amen, amen, to get saved, was it? All right, let me go. Sometimes good churches are even taken over by bad pastors because either the church has too many terrors in it or the saved are not wise enough to prevent it. Can I talk today? Today we have too many people who have never been in church and their parents was not believers and they're more like the Greeks on Mars Hill where Paul had to start from scratch telling them about the unknown God. Those on Mars Hill were constantly seeking some new thing. How that sound? And a lot of people today are just like that. Seekers. Seeking for something new. But they're unsure what they're seeking for. That's why they hear that, hear that, hear that, hear that. Over here, over there, over here, over there. Get over there, that's where they want to be, they ain't happy there. Get over here, they ain't happy there. Always looking for something, seeking after something, and unsure what they're seeking for. So they grab on to the different philosophies and the different fads that's happening. Come on, somebody. Believing that if it looks good, if it feels good, if it sounds good, then it must be right. I got to go to my seat. But as I go this morning, you look like one on the outside, but on the inside, there's never been a change of heart, and Satan has deceived you. And in spite of what you may think about the Bible, in spite of what others may say, you're not going to go to heaven without Jesus Christ yes. as your Lord and Savior. Everybody is not going to heaven. Jesus told Nicodemus, let me hit on that a little bit. Can you give me John 3? Hey Amen. John 3, let me hit on that a little bit. I just want you to see it, and then we're going to come back to 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, and I'm almost finished. Look at what Jesus told Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews who came to Jesus by night, John 3, and, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be what? Born again. I like that. Come on, somebody. Except a man be what? Born again. He cannot what? He cannot what? He can't see the kingdom of God except he be born again. Now come on, look at your neighbor. Say the Bible says it. I believe it. And that settles it. See, Pastor Howard didn't write the Bible. Pastor Howard preaching on the Bible though. And I'm going to stay with God's word. I ain't got time to put my salvation in the hands of nobody but Jesus Christ himself. I don't care if they doctor this, doctor that, wrote this book, wrote that book. Got a church with 20,000 members. I'm going to bank my salvation on what Jesus said. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of who? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus answered in verse 3 and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Now look at Jesus. He didn't even entertain that foolish question. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. In other words, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. He said, Marvel not that I say it unto you, you must be born again. In other words, don't look at me all crazy and amazed like you don't know what I'm talking about. You got to be born again. Yes. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you must be born again. Must be born again. Amen. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 3 and 4, King James Version. Satan brings his blinding delusion to fool you. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, verses 3 and 4. It says... But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why? 
in whom the God of this world, that's the devil, all right, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's the problem with people talking about the church. That's the problem with people talking about the pastor. That's the problem with people talking about you. That's the problem with people. They ain't. They can't do this. They can't. They always into this. Always into that. Here, there, here. Because Satan has blinded their minds. That's why Jesus said before he said in Philippians two and five, and you don't have to go there. But he said, "Let this man be in you, which was also in." Christ Jesus. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now look what he said there in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Oh, I believe in God. I believe in God. My mind ain't blind. I believe. James said you do well to say you believe in God. The devils believe too. What that mean? How you living? Look at your baby and say, how you living? How you living? Well, I say, let me go a little bit further. How you living when you leave church on Sunday? How you, <laughs> how you living Monday? How you living Tuesday? Yes. Wednesday? Yes. Thursday? Yes. Friday? Yes. Saturday night when everybody poor? How you living? Yes. Yes. How you living on your job? Yes. How you living when you get amongst unbelievers? Yes. How you living? That tells the story. Come on, somebody. Let me go. He said, In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. See, if Satan can deceive a preacher, if Satan can deceive one third of the angels, mark it down. If you are not saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, he can deceive you also. What does the Bible say about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Matthew 24 and 24. Matthew 24 and 24 says it like this here. He says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were what possible they shall deceive the very elect. You know why it's not possible for them to deceive the very elect? Because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're not a terror. You're the weak. You're the real thing. You ain't counterfeit. You with me? But if you counterfeit, if you ain't the real thing, if you're just trying to make a show, what they used to call it, you showboating. Come on, somebody. You can be deceived. You see? Many times it's hard to distinguish who is really saved and who is not. I don't know. But watch this. It's just my job to preach the word of God. Now watch this. I'm reminded of a time in my, and I'm almost through. I'm reminded of a time in my early ministry days when I questioned my own calling. Because of the way that certain people of the churches were living. Yes. Yeah. And I question my own self, my own calling, that I'm preaching to people and seem like they still just, like they ain't getting it. I had a dream one night that I was right here preaching and everybody in the church was asleep, laying across the pews, just sleep, and I was just a preacher. And I would see people come to church and shout and holler and praise God, dance, some even speak in tongues and all that. And be outside doing all kind of crazy stuff. Not that I was going around looking for them or following them. But God will show you things. He'll reveal things to you. He'll show you people. And so I question my own calling. Am I supposed to be? Am I called to be a preacher? Am I preaching right? What am I doing? And I remember the Lord speaking to me like this here through the Holy Spirit. He said, you can't make people live right. You can't make people come to church. And you can't make people get saved. And he closed it with this. He said, preach my word. Preach my word. And then there was another time in my early ministry days. And I asked the Lord another question. 
Because sometimes I would be out on my job and everywhere and I'm right, I was all over the place with my job and I would see supposedly saints, listen to me, preachers. I seen preachers, watch this here. I seen preachers park around the corner and somebody else going in the store getting looking beer and coming out, get going back and getting truck. And and, and y'all know where I worked at out the inner town. So they would come out there to that liquor store. So y'all wouldn't see them on the front row. And they would park over there at the, I don't know if it's still an Exxon station or not. They would park over there at the Exxon station and somebody would walk over there to the liquor store. Now y'all know I just worked right down the road. Yeah. And sometimes I'd be passing through there and I see this here and I, and I, and I do like this here y'all. I, I see it now like I don't see now like I'm looking at some paperwork or something. Cause I say well if they get caught, I don't want them thinking that I'm the one went back and told on them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, I asked the Lord again. I said, Lord, why you keep letting me see these things? And then they come out there to the Chevron and all that station, that what they call that Tom Thumb out there, they buy their lottery tickets and all that stuff, the scratch-offs. And there was times that I'd be in the store and I'm seeing them and I act like it's taking me a long time to find what I'm looking for so they wouldn't think I seen them. And then they trying to hide it behind the bike and all that. Now I ain't talking about anybody. I'm talking about church folk. Y'all with me? Church folk. And I say, Lord, why do you keep letting me see these things? Because I'm not running behind nobody, following nobody, trying to see it. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me just like this here. He said, because I don't want you to be like that. Yeah. That was in my early ministry days. I've never forgotten that. Now somebody probably sitting out there, oh, he think he all perfect and all that. No. But I'm striving for holiness. He said, be ye perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness is still right. Holiness is still right. Holiness is how you talk, how you live, how you dress, how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself, where you go and where you don't go, who you hang out with, who you don't hang out with. Holiness is still right. Do you hear me today? And God knows who we are. Many of us are living among weeds. I'm going to go to my seat. And I'm going to read these scriptures out to you as I go to my seat. I'm going back to our text. And I'm going to read it out. Simple read it out. Before I do that though. The Bible says that. And I didn't give you this. Sis, I don't think. The Bible says. When it comes to. False prophets. And I believe it when it comes to us too. He said you shall know them by their fruits. Yes. Say do men gather grapes of thorns of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Yes. And he says it like this. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. I'm going to close out with our text. If you will, go back to verse 20, all of our texts. Verse 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. And y'all read it out with me to yourselves. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. When I, when I picked that up, sometimes I began to look at our church. And I began to Look, as the church grew, as the church grows, watch this here, <laughs> watch this here. 
Every pastor want their church to grow. Every pastor want their church to grow. But sometimes the growing of your church ain't what you need. Do you hear me today? Sometimes with more people come more problems. And sometimes when your church is growing, they ain't all being sent by God. Let's see what it says now. The devil saying so. Y'all hear me? But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, does not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? Watch this. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Should we go and pull them up? Pull them weeds up? Watch this. Watch this. But he said, no. Because while you gather up the counterfeits, or while you gather up the hypocrites, or while you try to pull out the tails, he said, you root up all so the wheat with them. Watch this. Watch this. Can I preach it? Can I talk it? Sometimes when you pull out that hypocrite, they may be brothers or sisters or somebody else is doing right. Yeah. But because you call them out, them all both of them leave. That's what he's talking about. Because the family member, blood thicker than water. That's my blood. You don't do them like that. You know they're wrong, but you go right along with them anyway and know they're wrong. So he said, no, don't worry about it. Now, this don't mean don't use church discipline when necessary. You with me? But listen to what he said. He said, let them both grow together until the harvest. Let them, grow. Let them both grow together. Until the harvest. Now we're talking about out in the world. Let them both grow together until the harvest. He said a time of harvest. He said and in the time of harvest. I will say to the reapers. He said gather ye therefore first. Them crooks. Them counterfeits. Them unbelievers. Yes. And bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Yes. Come on. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him. That's I love them disciples. Because one thing about them, if they didn't understand something, they come back to Jesus and say, explain that to me. What did you mean by that? And that's where we ought to be. When we read something or study something about it, we don't understand it, we ought to pray, Lord God, give me understanding of that. Help me, Holy Ghost. Watch this here. Holy Ghost made for more than jumping and shouting. Holy Ghost come to give you wisdom. Give you understanding. Give you light on things. Watch this here. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. And the disciples came unto him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tales of the wheat. Explain that to us, Jesus. Watch this. And he answered them and said, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Jesus. Okay. The field is the world. See, the field is broader than the church. It's the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That's the wheat. That's the children of the kingdom. Okay. But the tares are what? The children of the wicked one. I tell you all again, we ain't all children of God. Yes. Everybody ain't children of God. Come on. He said the enemy that came in by night and sold them into your church or sold them into your home or sold them onto your job Wherever you at, come on somebody. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest, when it comes harvest time, the harvest is the end of the world. Yes. Look at your neighbor say, it's a day coming. It's a day coming. Watch this here. And the reapers are the angels. God's angels. Okay, come on. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. That's talking about hell, lake of fire. Yes, sir. You with me? Yes. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do it evil, wickedness, iniquity. Watch this. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. And there will be what? Wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
See, he's using a parable, but he ain't talking about grass. The grass ain't going to be hollering and crying, is it? Them weeds ain't going to be hollering and crying, is it? Them weeds. Come on. It's the unbelievers, the hypocrites. Those that sow discord. Those that tear up churches. Those that tear up homes. Come on, somebody. I'm instead of preaching, but I'm through preaching, right? Then shall the righteous. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look here. That's why you got to hold on to what you got. That's why you got to get Jesus in your life and stay with it. We ain't got time for foolishness. I ain't got time for bouncing here and there, listening to this and listening to that and following this person and that person. Come on, somebody. Get Jesus in your heart and mind while there's breath in your life and hold on to it. Come on, somebody. He said, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let them hear. Who hath spiritual ears to hear? You better hear this. You hear everything, whatever you hear, take in all that other stuff. You better let it go. But hear what God is saying. We're going to close with Psalms 1. One more verse and we through. One more, I'm sorry, one more Psalm. Six verses. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You see that? If you want to be blessed, don't be walking with everybody. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Listen to everybody. Counsel means taking advice from ungodly people. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Be careful who you're hanging out with. Come on, somebody. It ain't that you think you all that and you better than everybody else, but you better be careful who you're hanging out with, who you're following, who you're listening to. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Come on. But his delight, you and mine, our delight ought to be in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Read your Bible. Meditate on God. Come on, somebody. Stop running up and down the road on the phone all the time. Get in your word. Come on, somebody. And when you do that, he said he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That looks to me like a formula. Yes. Sometimes you ain't got because you ain't doing. I oh, wish I had some help. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so. Those tares, they are not so. But they are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Blowing, just throw it up in that blowing everywhere. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They ain't going to be there with you. Yes. Come on, somebody. And we got to be careful that we don't be with them. Come on, somebody. I close with that. Simple. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you can't fool God. He knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. We stand. We stand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for your word today.